Kia ora, kia ora, kia ora. Ah, kia ora, it's fine. Uh, hope everyone is well in this time. Um, and everybody's had a good weekend, whatever they've been doing. Um, so yeah, I'm just having, uh, having a bit of a reflection on uh, our, well, my Kaha scholarship training. Uh, just coming off uh, the bat of our our Sunday Kaho Hui uh, with all our uh, participants. So yeah, I'll just kick started off here. This is a reflection for our guest speaker tonight. Her name is uh, Inez White, and uh, she is a multiple stream income uh, entrepreneur. Uh, professional in the uh, property sector, uh, expert in her own right, uh, through her um, through her university studies, actually holds a, a master's, which allowed her to work as a um, property expert, independent, uh, giving advice on um, property, so to speak. Uh, so, Ian is, uh, came to us and spoke uh, to us about a few things regarding e-commerce and business in general and also being a Māori intra- entrepreneur, uh, which is really exciting. So, so, so informative. Uh, Ian is White um, started off her uh, studies in... Australia. She studied, uh, went to university in Australia, and became a uh, property uh, valuer. Um, and she lived there for about eight years of her uh, younger life. Uh, born in uh, Rotorua, uh, Iwi uh, o Te Arawa, and uh, yeah, definitely uh, from a strong Fucker Papa line. And um, she spoke about how Farno was always her main goal and um, how Farno values were set quite high as part of her character uh, growing older. Um, just a little kia ora to everybody that's tuned in, just a little bit of a um, reflection on our guest speaker tonight, which was uh, Inez White. Um, so moving along, uh, she ended up going to study uh, in uh, different fu- different different kinds of education, which is totally different from where she is at the moment. Um, she went and studied uh, how to develop her, her whānau uh, farm. Um, so she spoke a little bit about basically being educated and how education was highly um, it was just something prevalent in her family her dad was a a uh, academic and her mum was also an academic um, so moving along into her business and professional life uh, she became a property valuer in uh, Aotearoa so she had to resit a lot of her mahi as well, which was um, for a wahine and for anybody, I guess, um, trying to start another life back in Aotearoa. It's going to be hard. Um, but she had the, the mindset to overcome these barriers by, she spoke a little bit about mindset as well, which was by setting herself a goal and making that um, goal her, her, she spoke about her why, making that the most important thing that would be able to stand the test of time. So in uh, times of turbulence, you could always go back to your why and it would be able to uh, help you to push forward through some of the trying 
times in your life. Um, it was just really interesting to listen to her quote it all about how it was just a natural kind of progression for her to be in business after she made a decision that she while she was valuing property in New Zealand she noticed that particularly Maori people weren't the landowners anymore they weren't homeowners they weren't home buyers um, it became noticeable to her that she was actually valuing the property in Rotorua for people outside of her area, which was from Auckland mainly. And she felt like she was actually adding to the detriment of the people. So she actually had to pull back from that and readjust and recalibrate. And I think that's like a good reflection to see as well. Like she was in a professional realm, earning good money, having a career, but came to a point where the values and the characteristics of that particular career were conflicting against your your values as a person. And that was a reflection that we saw last week as well from um, Jace Meyer, how she said that you have to have your values so strong and to stick to those values as a character, as your main character, um, as your main characteristics, and those values will pull you through whatever may be coming at you. Um, so yeah, back to Inez. Uh, she spoke on how she needed to revalue her her values. Uh, re reevaluate her characteristics moving forward and how she would operate so she had she said well her main goal in her life is so that her mokopuna would never be a tenant in their own land let alone Aotearoa so that's quite a massive goal for anyone um but particularly for Māori people, particularly for Indigenous people, you know, being someone that rents your property in your own country, where your grandparents were born, your great-great-grandparents were born, it's just a really difficult thing to kind of fathom that there's that separation where you now become not part of your land anymore so she felt that she needed to readjust this so she started her own business off the back of that uh, multiple streams of income she started a uh, she didn't know how to do these things but all she knew is that she needed to start her own business uh, she looked into Shopify uh, back in 2015 she didn't know how to put a shop uh, a shop together for Shopify but follow the step-by-step -step instructions and the videos so ingenuity came came forward and a desire to succeed uh, was pushing her so there were days you know she didn't want to get up and that that pretty much reflects into a lot of people's lives you know there's those moments in your life where you don't want to get up you don't want to keep going and it's because of that drive you need that drive and that drive stems from your why it's that reason why you get out of bed it's that reason why you push through the rain it's that reason why you go through the hard times and you come out on the next side it's because of that reason why you have to succeed it's a non-negotiable that's my two cents into that um so apart from having the mental resilience of of wanting to succeed and coming across uh, barriers uh, she opened a shop a Shopify account she started an Airbnb um, and through all of this uh, before she started doing all of that sorry she said to herself well what am I a professional at you know what can I do to help 
so she st started doing a video she did one video and that video was advice to Māori about how to buy your home buy a first home how to uh, go through the process of the banks uh, how to look at your savings um, and it eventuated into how do you turn uh, your land that you buy in general title into a proper kainga or how do you succeed in, in successfully structuring your papa kainga if you're already living on one so that pretty much blew her, blew up and um, created this massive influx of interest as to how you do that so 150,000 views later in such a short period of time it's like an overnight kind of thing she realized that she had a gift of being able to share her knowledge and there was an interest so from there she started developing just videos to share her knowledge about property for maori with an indigenous lens uh, and how to succeed in those processes and i thought well i remember seeing her video a long time ago and thinking well this this uh whitehead is definitely onto it and i wish i paid more attention to it back then because it might have put me onto a bit of a um, a different tangent regarding whenua land homes maori and aotearoa in general uh, so she started a mentoring program around how you do that um, so you should definitely look her up ENS White is her name, I-N-E-Z White, and I think her link is in the comments or in the description. Um, and she started a program, a 12-week program, and she started uh, broadening her entrepreneurship and her e-commerce business from there. Um, holding uh, videos where you can uh, rent them, so that you can go back and uh, watch them uh, for a certain time frame and then you could buy them if you wanted the knowledge to sit with you so you could refer them or you could show other friends and whanau and then there were the mastermind classes basically where she would take high ticket value customers maybe only about five of them and do a webinar so almost a one-on-one -on -one kind of situation if you wanted a one-on-one -on -one, then that would have a different kind of price ticket. So in terms of the e-commerce uh, training and what we've learned, that is called the value ladder. So the actual value of the customer increases over time. And how do you keep uh, reciprocating that value to the customer to help them solve whatever issues they may need uh, help with? Uh, so this was a really good uh, reflection at the end of the corridor, which uh, really struck a chord with me. Um, she's a multiple uh, stream income entrepreneur, as I was saying, and some of the stuff she was doing is just like, really just go with the flow kind of thing, which was pretty cool to hear that she was able to just start these businesses up because she needed to start those businesses up, if that means anything to you. Um, she needed to visit places so she needed some passive income uh, so she used Airbnb she discovered how to use Airbnb then she rent out one of her rooms in her house so that was a passive income that was that she was experiencing then she developed a Shopify account and a Shopify drop shipping system and um, started multiple income streams from that as well selling um, stuff that you wouldn't even you wouldn't even know that was her and part of her character uh so coming to the end of that my main reflections of that was one to be um resilient to change change is always going to happen around you but you have to hold that mindset of i know what i'm doing i know where i am and i know why i'm here and that will pull you through some of the hardest times
Uh, also, another reflection of mine from that corridor is that out of all the study and out of all the academia, it came down to one thing. It came down to whānau. It came down to how do I spend more time with my loved ones and not out there working. Because as you get more and more professional up the food chain, you lose more and more time with your whānau because you get more and more respons- responsible, uh, responsibility put on your shoulders. You have more and more people to, to um, answer to. So that was a big reflection for me was to actually move from where you want to be first and have that as your main uh, goal. So I want to spend more time with my family, I want to spend more time with my wife, and I want to make multiple income streams that are passive, so I don't really have to think about it too much, I don't have to handle too much, so why can't it be that easy? Well, not that easy, but why can't it be that streamlined? Why can't you organise it to that point where, yeah, I can do that, so I loved her kind of approach to it, um, her ahua was really light, even though she did go through a lot of uh, hardships in her time to get to where she is. So now she's the uh, Shopify Indigenous Ambassador. So she takes care of the the world between corporate and Māori beliefs and tikanga and trying to manage that together. So you can see that even in the realm of Shopify, the Indigenous lens, so to speak, is being noticed to the point where you have to have an indigenous ambassador to make those communications make sense. So I, that's pretty much me. Uh, that last video was um, Jace Mayer, and this one here is Ian is uh, white, and before that was um, Sister B, and these have been three amazing. Uh, people to reflect from as entrepreneurs in the world of e-commerce. All right, Fano, that's me for the night. Um, you guys be safe, take care of each other, be good to each other, and uh, love to the world. All right, peace.